Oh, we go. We'll call the members. Randy Brown. Here. James Williams. Here. Mr. Seven. Here. Pam Bioko. Here. David Miller is here. I'm number three, flag seat. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I number four, vote to approve not approve Sanders Bledsoe and Hewitt's presentation of audit for the 2018-2019 school year. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Good evening. You got it. My name is uh, Brandon Brandt, I'm a representative from Senator Bletso Hewitt. I'll be presenting your audit this evening. Okay. Appreciate you guys having me first on the agenda because I'm going to have to pull off on the road somewhere, leaving here, going back to Tulsa to do one on the phone a couple of this, so <laughs> I, I, I know I won't miss that. Yeah. So, all right, I'll give you the short and skinny of it. Nothing major here this year that we found. Uh, we'll start on page 11. And this summarizes uh, the prior year's significant deficiencies. Last year we did give you significant deficiency in the audit uh, on the purchase orders. And this was based on them not always being encumbered before the purchase occurred. Uh, the Oklahoma State statutes require that you encumber anything before you actually make the purchase. This was kind of more of a problem last year, especially than it was this year. It got a lot better this year. And partly because it's probably still happening is because we came in like January or... Uh, something last year, so you'd already went through half the year before you could actually make the adjustments to correct it. So it did get better, especially at, we noticed after we completed the audit uh, last year, it got a lot better. So, uh, you know, the recommendation, our recommendation of this position was that it was significantly improved upon in the 2018 19 fiscal year. So it's no longer a deficiency. And you guys no longer have any deficiencies. It's just going to be management letter related things. It's just more informational purposes for the board. Uh, the State Department does see it, and they do require corrective action, but technically it's not really part of the audit. It's just uh, for informational purposes, like I was saying. We'll move over to 12. Uh, this is the schedule of audit results. Uh, and this page 12 kind of uh, just compacts all the letters in front of it into a nice, neat little format for you. Uh, just section 1.1 there. An adverse opinion was issued for the combined financial statements in conformity with uh, general accepted accounting principles, or GAAP, accounting. <laughs> and then a qualified opinion was issued for the omission of a general fixed assets account group in the combined financial statements. Uh, you guys are like everybody else in the state, minus the really big districts like Broken Arrow, TPS, OKC, public schools. And they have an entire department with the uh, qualified opinion for the fixed assets group that keep track. They tag every printer, iPad, computer. Uh, you can trace it to any given room at any given point. Uh, they get values on buildings, uh, equipment. They depreciate it over time. It's just not something at your, your district size that is feasible unless the State Department would actually produce more funding for it, which we all know they're not going to do. Right. So you're kind, of, you're kind of like everybody else in, uh, that's your size in this form. Uh, Point two, the audit disclosed no significant deficiencies in the internal controls. Uh, point three, audits disclosed no instances of noncompliance, which were material to financial statements in any way. Uh, four, the unmodified opinion was issued for compliance major programs, which you guys did just fine with your federal programs and we didn't even notice any coding errors. And your single audits, we have to we we're required to do a lot more stringent testing in the federal programs than we would on a smaller district if you expend over $750,000 a year, it's required. And uh, point five, the audit disclosed no significant deficiencies in the internal controls over the major programs, which were required to test uh, over 45% of your expenditures in those programs if you're a single audit, which we did, and you guys were in compliance with all those. Uh, point six, there's no significant audit findings that were required to be uh, performed under uniform guidance. And the rest of it just kind of throws down that it shows our major programs with tests for child nutrition and Title I programs. The threshold, like I stated, was $750,000. So mm -hmm. we'll move forward to 15. This breaks down your general fund for you. The original budget, final budget columns there, we're not really worried about. That's the estimate of needs just kind of compressed down uh, for budgeting purposes into your audit. We're concerned with the actual. 
And we'll go the third number up from the bottom, excess of revenues collected over under expenditures. Uh, the district expended $121,347 more dollars than it uh, collected in the prior fiscal year, leaving cash fund balance end of year $203,314. That's pretty close. I mean, you guys are you guys budgeted out pretty well there. You can't expect to run a surplus or, or ne never negative in a fiscal year. So you guys did good. I mean, it's no 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 biggies. You got a pretty healthy fund balance laying down there right now, but. We'll move through a lot of this to 31. Most of that before it was just a bunch of really boring accounting definitions, uh, so I will, I will spare you that. This just breaks down the, the district's outstanding debt, uh, bonds and uh, capital leases. That's uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Bonds have all been levied. Uh, you guys approve capital leases every year, so obviously you've seen all this, but just for your information, you know, that just breaks it down for you there. Uh, we will move over to page 39. And <laughs> this breaks down your activity fund, breaks it down in total, breaks it down uh, by individual sub-accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing we like to see when we uh, test the activity fund is that the additions and deductions are somewhere within about 10 to 15% of each other. Uh, you don't want to see, uh, for example, the senior class is a really good example. You don't want to see the senior class gather all this money and then hardly any of it's expended on them and it just rolls over to junior class or you put it in another sub account. Uh, this group did a very good job of this. You're within the, that, those parameters we like to see. And we'll come back to the activity fund a little bit later with some other stuff we found, but uh, we'll wait for that for a second. We'll go to 41. Page 41 breaks down all your federal programs, just shows your award amounts. Uh, shows your revenues and expenditures for the year. And like I said, the district did an excellent job of coding. Uh, that's kind of the main battle of federal programs is battling OCAS with everything, but uh, you guys did a really good job with that, so we had no, we had no issues with that. And like I said, all expenditures were allowable, and federal programs you guys did a really good job with, so we had no complaints there. And now we'll move back to the management letter, which is the last two, two pages. doesn't have page numbers. Like I said, this isn't really technically in the audit. It's more for informational purposes for the Board of Education. And we'll start there with the activity fund purchase orders. Uh, during the audit, we observed that five of the purchase orders did not have adequate supporting, supporting documentation attached. Uh, this, I think our activity fund custodian retired in the last year, too, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of something where maybe kind of coming to the end and just wasn't as diligent maybe in the past as they had been, so it, I think overall there's generally uh, supporting documentation that supported the expenditure, but you know, it's just something where there's something didn't get stapled or clipped to it, you know, and you guys do hundreds of purchases over the course of the year, so this can easily fall through the cracks. It, wasn't, it was more the exception than the rule, so. Uh, the activity fund receipts. Uh, we just found that there wasn't a clear trail uh, from the receipts the sponsors, coaches, cheer coaches, ag teachers, if, for example, are collecting. We couldn't really trace their collections clearly back into a deposit. Mm -hmm. And this is something you guys implemented about mid-year last year. You, they weren't using really the receipt books. And this is something that kind of came into the fold mid-year. It was kind of, a, mm -hmm. kind of a testing process for you. So I'm sure when we come back, and on this current fiscal year, that it'll probably seem like you all are heading in the right direction with this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like I said, that's kind of something that's kind of a mid-year adjustment that get fully implemented mid-year. So it's kind of hard to do when you know, we're auditing in January and telling you for that year to make, you know, changes then. It's like, you know, then you're kind of clustering, you know, trying mm -hmm. to, you know, get everybody on board real quick, which is hard to do. It's a lot easier to do at the beginning of the year. Get everybody on board, implement those procedures, and move forward. So, and then we'll move back to the next page. And the travel, that was kind of, I think, a mixture between the governmental funds and your activity funds as well. What we like to see with any travel is that anybody should be able to walk in here five years from now. None of us are around. Nobody knows what's going on. And they can look at the purchase order. They can tell when, where, why, how the travel occurred. They should kind of, the purchase order should tell its own story. It should be, you know, dummy proof, basically. Just, uh, we just recommend that because state auditor, if they ever come and look at something, and like I said, nobody's here, they're looking at something years past, you want to have more is better, basically. 
The more documentation, the better. So, and then we'll move down to the purchase orders. And this was the deficiency you had last year. Uh, we did notice still there were some that weren't encumbered before the expenditure occurred. But like I said, once the audit occurred and you moved into the later part of the year, it got better. And but it was still happening during the fiscal year that we audited, so we still put it in the management letter. So, but overall, I mean, I, I would say. You guys do a really good job here. They have, they, they're very transparent. Whatever we ask for, we can get easily. It's not pulling teeth, like with some clients. So, you know, we have, we don't have any real major concerns or anything like that. Like I said, overall, it's a good job. It's just kind of buttoning up a few things a little better, in our opinion. But I think you guys are on track to do that. And I remember meeting with the new activity fund custodian. She seemed pretty sharp, and like she had her, you know, she was going to commit to doing it stuff too, because that's kind of one of our main concerns. So. Like I said, I think you guys are overall doing a good, really good job just, you know, putting up fuel areas, no big deal. But if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. But No? No. Anybody else? All right. Mr. Brandon, we thank you. I appreciate you, folks. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I make a motion to approve. I'll second. Brandon Graham? Yes. James Williams? Yes. Misty Sweeney? Yes. Pam Mill? Yes. Item number five. Public hearing to allow tribal officials and parents of Indian children to discuss the school's impact aid program to make recommendations concerning the needs of their children, the LEA's educational program, and the degree of participation. This is a yearly item that we put on here, and we put it in the, out the public, and this has been sent to, posted and sent to the Creek Nation and the authorities if they wanted to. I mean, it, impact aid basically comes, I give you one sheet of paper there in mm -hmm. front and the back, that it comes from non-taxable federal program revenue additional costs. Like, for instance, we receive money like if uh, Creek Nation has a federal voter rent housing, we get a list for those that will turn in. If we don't receive funds for them because of that, or if their parents in the military, uh, items like that, we get reimbursed. The biggest problem we have with Impact Aid is sending those sheets on. Mm -hmm. Getting them back. back. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and this year, we're crossing fingers. I think we we had to go back and, and ask because the parent had one thand wrong after J and J services from Stigler, Oklahoma helped us do this. And there was like thirty seven you had to have to qualify and we had thirty seven but one of them was wrong. So ah. so we went back and got it corrected and we're in the process of that now, getting it looked at. And there's two types of impact aid. One of them is special ed, one of them is general funds. And the like it states here in the down at the mm -hmm. bottom there, they can be used for any general purpose. Mm -hmm. The past three or four years, we've done two things with them. We pay PSO, we pay our electric bill, but in special ed, that's restricted. We pay Therapy Works, and what Therapy Works does is they are in charge of oh addressing our kids and special needs that need any kind of. Physical therapy, staff training, that deals with the IDA Act, individual mm -hmm. disabilities, so we're that. And I will tell you, the last three years average, we've received from the general impact aid $22,677, and from the uh, special ed, $11,496. Mm -hmm. So that's just money that we can use, and we use it toward the bill. In other mm -hmm. words, if we wanted to direct some of it towards salaries, we could, but if you did that, then you'd pay for the electric out of that pot, so it's just somewhere where they've chose to use it. Matter of fact, I've been doing this for eight, nine years, and that's what they've always plotted those two, and the auditors would have had it, so mm -hmm. there's no problem with it. But we have to have this hearing in case somebody wants to question it or whatever. Sure, sure. And it was sent to the tribe in case they wanted to come, but we have a consultation with them yearly now. The EASA started that, so they know everything that we're doing, and we're in good shape there. But there's no uh, 
vote or anything we need on that. We'll just we will allow it for hearing. And okay. Anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for doing that, Rick. Item number six. Review, discuss, and vote to approve and not approve Indian education policies and procedures for the 2019-2020 school year. You have a copy of that in your packets there. Policies and procedures are our uh, Indian Ed Committee has already looked over these. They did these in April and uh, they were presented to them to see if there was any changes or so on that they have done. We redid this last year, Mrs. Sontag, when she was here, they they redid the uh, formula of it. And the first time, uh, down at the bottom where it says Indian policy and procedures, mm -hmm. tribes preferred method of communication. And we have a consultation with them once a year, the Secretary of Education over there, Greg Anderson, right. and uh, there's numerous people that meet in this and we go over our policies and our procedures with them and so far they have said that we're doing everything in line with what we should be doing. These are just procedures that we have written down here for them. So I'll need a motion and a second on, on this. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Randy Brown? Yes. James Williams? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. And the other. Yes. Item number seven. Vote to approve vote to approve or not approve the minutes of the November the eleventh, twenty nineteen regular board meeting. I would like to make a motion to table and review those minutes. Okay. Second. <coughs> vote to table Randy. and review. Okay. Randy Brown? James Williams? Yes. Misty Sweeney? Yes. Pam Milko? Yes. Item number eight, vote to approve or not approve the minutes of the November 14th special board election, well, uh, special board meeting, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Meeting co ordered by David Bullard at 7 30 p.m. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it matter if my name is spelled wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you can make those two corrections. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll make the motion that we accept with the <laughs> correction. Yeah, corrections as stated. with possible action on encumbrances and financial report.
What's Oklahoma Protective Services? Norm. I'll second that. Brown? Yes. 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 Junior senior class, junior class, and Henry the basketball booster.
make a motion to approve the fundraisers. I'll second. Randy Brown? Yes. James Williams? Yes. Misty Sweeney? Yes. Ben Bill? Yes. Item number 11, vote to approve or not approve the list attached is the very last page of surplus items to be sold or used the property as incentive reward prize for students. Uh, the uh, items here, uh, here you're looking, the televisions, mm -hmm. these are the televisions that are, um, they're old, they're, they're about this thick, mm -hmm. they haven't been used in years and years and years. And I don't know if we'll get any money out of them, but we need to get rid of them. We're saving up a lot of space. We haven't used them in uh, probably 10, 15 years. And so those are the TVs. <laughs> then the stands that go with them, which we'll get rid of all of it, just takes up a lot of space. Uh, we, don't, we, we don't use the stands. The teachers that wanted some stands went and got them, so the rest of them are, we're never going to use them. Um, we have the uh, uh, band that doesn't run. We're not going to, we don't need it. We want to surplus it rid of it. It's just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And we just pay insurance on it and we don't use it. And there's the bin number there. Um, so we have the TVs, the stands, and the van. The bikes, it's actually five instead of ten. And what the bikes came from is we, we, uh, we got partial, a partial grant about five years ago. And then we get the rest of the grant. But they shipped the bikes anyway. They mm -hmm. sat in storage for several years. Well, our STEM kids put them together for some kind of project. And they're in perfectly good shape. So Mr. Wine wants to use them as an incentive like for reading and give them out periodically through the year and maybe into the next year give out a bike to a student. Mm -hmm. And so we had the kids, the kids put them together and so once we surplus them, we can go ahead and he can start doing his incentive plan and start giving the bikes away. Yeah, good idea. Uh, <clears throat> I'll make the motion that we approve. I'll second that. Randy Brown? Yes. James Williams? Yes. Ms. P. Sweeney? Yes. Sandy Oakley? Yes. I, I, I notated it that from 10 bikes to 5 bikes I put on there. Okay. Gotcha. I'm number 12, vote to accept or not accept resignation letter from Ms. Tina Walters as of November 29, 2019. Mr. Noble? Uh, to whom it may concern. I would like to inform you of my intention to resign from Henrietta Public Schools. My last day will be November 29th, 2019. I appreciate the opportunities given to me at Henrietta Public Schools. Tina Walters. What uh, position did she hold? She's a parent. Cafeteria. Cafeteria. Oh, sorry, cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Well, she went there. Long time. Ooh, yes. Uh, Where at? Which cafeteria? Which cafeteria? The high school. high school. Well, she was originally at the elementary cafeteria, yeah. and then mm -hmm. when, her, when her little girl went to middle school, mom, yeah. her little girl went to the high school cafeteria, yeah. so, yeah. mm -hmm. and my mom, her mom has made jokes to her recently about, um, can we not move you to the cafeteria? <laughs> 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 she said, believe me, I thought about it. <laughs> 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 Just keep following her, huh? <laughs> I'll make the motion to accept her resignation. I'll second that. Randy Graham? Yes, sir. James Williams? Yes. Fifty two. Yes. Ten Milton. Yes. I'm number thirteen. Vote to approve or vote to accept or not accept resignation letter from Mr. Ron Black as of December thirty first, two thousand nineteen. Mr uh, Mr. Rick Enos, Mr. Noble, and Henrietta School Board. Please accept my, accept my retirement date effective December 31st, 2019. Driving a school bus is very similar to raising children. My daughter has a large plaque on her refrigerator that reads, Raising children is being pecked to death daily by chickens. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for allowing me to be a grandpa to the children and some of their parents. Respectfully, Ronald W. Black. <laughs> That's cute. Awesome. That's an original one. That's, That's Ronald. Spot on. <laughs> we'll make that motion. <laughs> I'll second it. Randy Brown? Yes. Ms. James Williams? Yes. Misty Sweeney? Yes. Pam Bioka? Yes. <laughs> 
Okay. Item number 14, vote to accept or not accept the resignation letter from Ms. Shelley Bogle as of January the 5th, 2020. Dear Ms. Matlock and Mr. Noble, please consider this my resignation as a paraprofessional effective January 5th, 2020. I have enjoyed my years at Henrietta Public Schools and will greatly miss the students and staff. I have been offered a management position in Okima. I feel that accepting this position is in the best interest of my family. Sincerely, Shelley Bogle. So moved. Second. Jane Graham? Yes. James Williams? Yes. Misty Sweeney? Yes. And Bill? Yes. Item number 15. Vote to convene into executive session in accordance with 25 Oklahoma State Section 307B1 to discuss the hiring of A, one, uh, one six hour cafeteria position and the evaluation of Superintendent Mr. Delane Noble. So moved. So moved. Nice. Yeah. Randy Brown? Yes. James Williams? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. 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 702. Item number 17, executive session minutes. Discussion held, no action was taken. Item number 18, vote to employ or not employ the following position for the 2019-2020 school year. A, one six-hour cafeteria position for the remainder of the 2019-2020 school year. Mr. Noble. Uh, we'll table that. So moved. Um, Second. So quick here, one of Jane Graham? Yes. James Williams? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Pam Yes. I have number 19, HESA report. Not here. Not here. No report. I have number 20, HEA report. No. No report. <laughs> okay. I got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. Okay. Got nothing. okay. I have number 21. Uh, principal's report. Oh, yeah. All is well. <laughs> you can read my little notes on it. I know it's late. I, did I give? Did Tammy give one to you? Oh, 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 no. no. I thought she yeah. printed it off. Yeah. Well, we do um, have a lot of things coming up. I will go really fast. Okay. Basketball uh, game tomorrow night at Preston. Uh, on Thursday night, we have the choir uh, Christmas music concert. Concert. Oh. On Friday night, we have basketball at, is it Kellyville? Kellyville. Kellyville. Saturday, 2 o'clock, band Christmas concert. Saturday at 2. Uh -huh, Saturday at 2. And 6 o'clock, Thursday night, is the choir concert. Next Thursday? No, this Thursday. Thursday. This coming Thursday, Thursday night. So yeah. this week, we have a lot of In stuff. Our our yeah. elementary music program is tomorrow, tomorrow night. night. Oh my. And it's we gonna are. be a little bit different this year. We're kinda of timing it. Last year we had such a overwhelming response of people that were there that yeah, it was, it was overcrowded. Yeah. So we're kind of breaking it into mm -hmm. two sections, kind of a little intermission in the middle, um, to maybe allow some movement Post of leave, people to leave or another kind of thing. Yeah. So maybe we won't be so crowded. So that begins tomorrow night at five thirty. Um our, our fifth grade play tonight at Preston. I think both of our teams uh, lost, uh, but we've been really proud of their progress this year. Um, our canned food drive is going great. Um, our last year, our students brought like 3,500 cans, so we're hoping to top that this year. When is that in? We got this Friday. Mm -hmm. We got a little friendly competition going on. Maybe that has energized them a little bit to want to bring more cans. Maybe a little bit extra recess for those that bring some extra cans. So well, there you go. We're working on trying to get them to bring those cans in to help out the Lions Club. We also had a generous donor that gave us 76 turkeys for oh, the Lions Club. Goodness. So that was yeah. pretty remarkable that uh, wow. we got that accomplished. Well, and remarkable is you found the place to put them. You found freezers. I said, I may be starting the turkey babysitting service. I don't know. Here, can you watch a turkey? Can you watch a turkey? Can you watch? <laughs> yeah. But we found two locations to nice. split the turkeys, and so that was the 
stressing me out at one point, but it's all good now. Yeah, she called me and told me she had to find a place for 76 turkeys, and I said, well, you got it on your own with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thanks, have a hand. 76 um, turkeys. Yeah, 76 turkeys. Um, next week, um, we're having potluck, and I wanted to make sure the board knew that they were invited to come what days have lunch with us sometime. All of our teachers are going to be bringing food on different days. Uh, the 16th on the 17th is the cafeteria has their big Christmas dinner kind of day. So we didn't do pot potluck on that day, but then the 18th, 19th, and 20th, um, we'll have lots of fun we things. We can potentially come so every one, one of those days. Pop, just uh -huh. pop in and say hi and have a little snack. We can eat all week. And, yeah, all week long. Where are you at the 16th? Is that a Monday? That's a Monday. It's yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much all week. That last week was cool. Our potluck is on the 20th. We're not doing it every day at the high school. We're doing it one day on the 20th. We're going big or going home. Is that at your place? At the elementary, yeah. Okay. Just in our work time. So I wanted you guys to be. Okay. I uh, know you're welcome to be there if you have a chance to Thank stop you. by and visit, mm -hmm. visit with the teachers. Yeah. We're doing something different on the um, 19th, the last day of school. In the past, we've traditionally done like Christmas parties in the mm -hmm. classroom, and um, it's kind of like parents take off work and they come watch their kid like a cupcake, and then they go back to work. And so we've tried to change that up a little bit to do something more interactive with the families. So uh, you'll remember at Halloween we did the Monster Mash, so we're kind of doing a spin-off of that for Christmas um, in the gym of having a projected screen where there's some. Um, well, interactive dancing things that they could do. We're going to have like a make your own cupcake, uh, decorate your cupcake kind of thing, make an ornament. Um, lots of little fun activities set up for the kids that they'll come in there during like an hour of the day. That will be kind of in place of their party. So we're really excited about that to see how that goes. PTO is helping out with the concession stand and mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So wow. National Honor Society students will go down and help. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and I think our middle school, yeah, NHS NHS. I don't know, NHS, NHS. NHS. Some of our middle NHS school NHS. students have, a, middle school student council has offered to come help mm -hmm. with that a bit too. So we're kind of pulling a lot of different things together to <laughs> have a fun day for the kids on the last day of school. Um, and our gifted and talented kids are going to the nursing home to do Christmas caroling and they've been making cards and ornaments and things like that to take and um, I think that's going to be a really good thing. And I wanted to make mention of our um, Employees of the Month that we've had so far this year. Um, Nikki Story from fourth grade, Dana Chu from third grade, Kathy Bailey, our counselor, and Logan Ashley, those are some of our employees at the elementary. Um, and I know we've posted those on Facebook, but if you're not a Facebook person, I wanted to recognize those mm -hmm. those people for the job with them. Awesome. Good. So we're the line of busy schedule. You think you got money? Scary one, I am. Uh, Mr. Grabman was our uh, employee of the month. Mm -hmm. Last month was um, Kathy yeah. Snyder. And you're going to have to help me if I go any farther. <laughs> and Jen Craw. So those have been our three. Gotcha. Oh, and I totally forgot to mention Mrs. Bourne. Oh my gosh, we totally appreciate all her hard work that she's put in towards this Christmas program that we're doing tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. She has just, she's really worked hard and the, and the staff has, I mean, like, we came up today to the auditorium to practice and it's like all hands on deck of getting them up here and getting them back and mm -hmm. right. um, so everybody's really pitched in to help her but you know she's been the backbone of it all and we really appreciate her hard work that she's put in to, to pull this mm -hmm. program off tomorrow right. night. Great, Thank sounds, you. sounds amazing. Thank you. Uh, number 22, Athletic Directors Report. Oh, these are ball games. Okay. Uh, 23, Mr. Fox. These are ball ballgames. <laughs> uh, 24, Mr. Noble's Report. Okay. I got just a couple things. Okay. Um, the trophy, you'll see it. It looks like a um, highlight. Yeah. Uh, we won again uh, for the PSO. Um, uh, what would they call that? 
I mean, where we save the energy, most energy, energy, energy efficiency, maybe peak performer, peak, peak performer, performer. That's peak performer. performer. Yeah. So we yeah. did one that had this program, I guess, going for six years. We went twice, or yeah. six years, or five years ago. And then we won it again. Yeah. So that's kind of neat. Um, what we do is in the summer, we all hands on deck. We all go around. We do uh, we shut everything off like they tell us to. And wow, that's we, we got it down about last summer. We were getting out of here in about ten to twelve minutes. <laughs> When they would tell us to do it. We could shut everything down and gone. And, gone. and, and it, it brings us money and we win the award. So, there you go. Thank yeah. you. So, uh, we got that. And then um, we'll share a letter with you uh, concerning our band, which they uh, got some kudos. Um, to whom it may concern, on behalf of Omogi Muscogee Creek Nation Indian community, I would like to thank you for allowing the Night Brigade of Henrietta Public Schools for, to participate in our fall harvest. Or harvest Festival Parade. This year we had more than 30 participants despite the cold and rainy weather. The Principal Chief of the Muscogee Creek Nation, MCN National Council Representatives, and many dignitaries of our tribe participated in our parade to show of support for our Everyday Heroes theme. I would like to give a special thanks to your band educator and Everyday Hero, Mr. Alan Montgomery, in preparing his students for being parade ready. I know I have many other schools call me and say that their kids were not prayed ready and maybe they could do it next year. This is a testament to your band director's time and determination he has put in with your students. I and others in attendance will attest that it was your school's marching band that really lit up the parade with their lively music. With that said, we would like to show uh, our participation with a $300 honorarium for your high school marching band. We wish your band continued success this year, and again, we thank you, uh, respectively, Russell Wind, Community Administrator. Well, that was nice. Oh, that was nice. Uh, thank two, you very much. Yeah. Two more things real quick. We just, on our uh, Integrity Lighting Project with the LED, mm -hmm. uh, our district of LED, we, we got started. Um, they put up some monitors. It's going to stay up for about two weeks. They've already been up about almost a week, about a week I guess. Mm -hmm. So another week or so. And they're going to start from there. They're going to start the actual uh, projects, and they're going to, with the with their study they're doing right now, they're going to determine where they're going to start. We're trying to get them to do the gym first because of the construction, but it looks like they're the the floor thing is going to kind of get in the way, so we're going to have to wait till the floor goes in, then the lights. So I think they're going to start um, in the elementary and start working the afternoons, and then they're going to work out throughout the district. So we'll have hopefully have all that finished by the spring because of the holidays. So the spring we'll have should have all that finished, and we'll start seeing the rewards from that. Uh, as far as the gym, the uh, concerned update real quick. Um, the walls have been uh, fixed with the drywall. The insulation has all been repaired. Um, the gym has been cleaned. Um, the walls have been painted. The only thing we have now is the floor. Um, you know, we've hired a company to do it, so we're kind of working on their schedule at this point. Um, so right now, that's the last thing. Uh, as soon as the floor goes in, um, we just do final touch-up, clean-up, and we're ready to move in. Good. So those are the two big things going in our buses. We're thinking with the sixth. The uh, uh, buses will probably they're in. They're coming in this week, Friday, Thursday through Friday. They will start painting them probably Friday this weekend. Cameras in next week. Probably going to wait till after Christmas. Have them delivered. Six, they'll bring them. Start bringing them in here. We got staff, our professional club and they all have the drivers up here and they'll go over the cameras with us and stuff. And we'll probably start them that next week, the second week we get back. Uh, on the wrap. And we just sit and having them set here for while well, we're going for two weeks, so we might as well we'll get them after that. And, but, um, so that's and then we're going to like uh, Rick said the six. We're going to do the training on the ca the cameras because they all have cameras and um, ready to go. Okay, that's great. Thanks, exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. Thank you, Mr. Noble. Item uh, number twenty-five, new business. Yes, I have one. Thing. Um, we got this late, that's why I put on new business. Uh, Mr. Noble and Board of Education. Uh, oops, sorry. Oh, oh, okay. Dear Jamie Matlock, please accept this letter as notice of my resignation from my position as a paraprofessional. My last day of employment will be January 10th, 2020. I received an offer with American Airlines as a flight attendant, and after careful consideration, I realized that this opportunity is too exciting for me to decline. It has been a pleasure working with you and your team over the last year, and I will never forget all the wonderful memories I have of Henrietta Elementary School. Thank you for everything, Logan. Uh, Logan, Ashley. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. 
Cool. I'll second. Ready, Rail? Yes. James William? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Van Buren? Yes. Well, we wish you the best, but we enjoy it here. Uh, item number 26, board comments. Ms. Sweeney, we'll start with you. I'm good. Good? Yeah. Ms. Bianco? I just wish everybody a Merry Christmas since this is our last meeting before the holidays or right. Happy Holidays, whichever. And look forward to next year. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Ms. Brown? <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, principals and teachers and Mr. Noble and Mr. Rick uh, for, man, it's been busy. I mean, it's really been busy. So <laughs> we appreciate all you guys have done for us and for the kids and we just, uh, I know you guys are going to appreciate the break coming up, so mm -hmm. we appreciate it too, and hope you have a good break too. And then we have, we're excited for those buses, Rick. So we know you are too. Yeah. So and the new basketball, uh, getting it fixed up too, mm -hmm. the gym fixed up. That's exciting. I kind too. of enjoyed the old gym feel a little bit. Just saying, it's been nice being crowded yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to make everyone appreciate, appreciate it, it more. Yeah. 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 So, and it's going to look so Bring nice with all that feel. new stuff in there. It's going to look great. Yeah, that's good. Ms. Liz, glad to have you back on the set. So, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, item number 27, may I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Yes. 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 Yes.